What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 57 of the King's Speech Podcast. Check, check, check. And Josh, the podcast you can relate to, learn from, and laugh at from two guys who realize the streets and the club only look fun on television right now. Only play. Yo, only play. You, know, it's, you know what's so real about um, that statement is that I didn't go to the club this weekend, um, but I did go to a bar. Okay. It's way better on TV than it is in person, man. I was like, I want to go home. I feel you. That's that's how I've been since probably the age of twenty five. Yo, I was like, Wait. like, I do like I do enjoy like a good turn up, mm -hmm. a good some good music. Um, but nah, man. Like I'm also cool at being at the crib. I'm very cool being at the crib. How was your week? How uh, would you guys? What do you guys do down there? Did you guys are you guys able to like walk outside without having a life jacket now? <laughs> Yo, it last week we really till Wednesday. Wednesday there was steady rivers mm -hmm. on like every corner. Um and then like the sun took it all away and it was cool. Um and then what did we do this week? We 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 kicked it, worked, um, and then we went to this little bar and I was like, oh. No, I really actually had a good time. Okay. But I'm like, oh, I'm just a cranky old man now. Um, and then we found a church. Nice. Yeah, we found a church down here. Very nice. Which was cool, socially distanced. Um, good vibes. Great vibe. The vibe was top five. No, How about uh, you? no cheating pastors. <laughs> That's the thing you got to look out for now, right? Is the pastor faithful? Who knows? My weekend was good. Who knows? Who knows? Yo, honestly, though, who really knows? Nobody. Only the pastor and God. That's <laughs> and, and the iCloud. Dick. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's really it. <laughs> um, my weekend was good. I went to this place called Ed's Lobster Bar uh, downtown. It was dope. It was great. Okay. Uh, was that when you were wearing a leather jacket or no? I was wearing a, it, was, it looked leather. It was faux. It was faux leather okay. actually okay. for uh, our Halloween costume because like we were Black Panthers. Okay. Like 70s, 60s Black Panthers. And I saw that, but I saw that late. Yeah, yeah. Actually, can I tell you a funny story about that real quick? I saw he, uh, Instagram is algorithms. So I saw that after the 31st. And so I'm scrolling down and I'm like, babe, did you see Trev with the matching hats? <laughs> right? Uh-huh. And she's like, yeah, it's their Instagram costume. And I'm like, I mean, she's like, she's like, it's their Halloween costume. And I'm like, oh, I, thought, I was like, Trevor's really pushing the edge with this fashion. <laughs> I'm on the edge, man. I am, I am a fashionista, indeed. Yeah. Fashionista. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Ed's Lobster Bar was dope. Um, I spent, honestly, I got, a, I got a lot of sleep this weekend. Like training, I don't know, it's, it's really taking a toll on my body. So I'm mm -hmm. really like into like being restful and foam rolling and icing and all of that stuff. So that's your thing now. I spent the weekend, you know, just like relaxing and chilling and doing that. How's the body feeling? Huh? How's your body feeling? Uh, today I feel great. Today I feel really good. Um, you know, I'm really like into the recovery stuff to make sure that I consistently feel good throughout the day. So I feel good today. I got a lot of sleep over the weekend. The Giants won a football game. I was excited. Did they? Yeah. They beat the Eagles. Uh, so I was uh, doesn't happen too often up here. No, nah, it, 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 I was going to ask you actually about this New York thing. It's, it's darker, obviously, because of daylight saving times. Yeah. So, and you tell me that you, you know, you've been tired. I know that New York 5 p.m., it's dark and it's cold. Yes, that is, that is, that is a vibe right now. Absolutely. It was cold this morning when I got up uh, to go train. And it, the thing is, is like, it's, we have that midday sun thing. It's like that thing right before winter, you know it. Like it's, Sometimes in the morning, you got to wear a North Face. In the afternoon, you're in a T-shirt and shorts. Right, 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 right. Your dynamic. It's that get sick weather, but you can't get sick anymore because if you call for a sneeze, you got COVID and nobody wants to fuck with you. Also, you have to be very careful of how sick you are. Yes, indeed. Yeah, you got you to gotta monitor all that stuff. Take your temperature. Uh, I had a little sniffle last week, and uh, thankfully, you know, it wasn't COVID. It was just something I had to take some, you know, Mucin X4 and I was good, but had a good week, had a good weekend. Can't complain. Nice. You know, speaking of the, the sniffles 
and being around people. I'm very grateful for my friends who know that I just had allergies my entire life because like the way people who don't know I have allergies treat me is honestly shameful. Absolutely. Yeah, because they, the, they think you got the Rona and you just yeah. out here Ronaing it up. Yeah. Inside. So I'm like, no, I'm sneezing because you have a shit suit. Yeah, your shit suit is making me sneeze. Um, not, not, not the Rona. Your cologne was nine dollars and ninety five cents. That's right. sneezing, homie. That's why I'm sneezing. Please, actually, six feet. But um, what were we rapping about today? Twelve feet. All right. So um, <laughs> you know, we got our format. We got a new format. Rolled it out last week. Uh, you know, rave reviews everywhere. Really? Uh, I think so. Yeah. So I know we started off with my two topics uh, last week. So this week, I think we should start off with your two topics. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Ready, I am prepared. Okay. <laughs> I, I am prepared. No, I just wasn't expecting to start it off. No. Oh. Um, huh? Let's get it. Let's get to it. Let's get straight to it. All right. Here we are, man. So actually, it's kind of cool because you asked me about um, my week. Yeah. The, like, the last two weeks have just been, like, just been hard, right? Like, just mentally. And so... I was like in like a little funk, whatever the case was, and the funk was just getting worse and worse, worse and worse and worse and worse. And finally kicked the funk, which is why I had a great weekend, X, Y, and Z. But it made me start thinking like in life, we can just go through highs and lows all the time. Yep. And we get into this funk all the time. It's like a, it's a, it's a cycle. It happens. It's natural. Um, it could be this. It could be COVID. It could be work. It could be whatever. But like highs and lows, they come and go. And it's like, what can we do to kind of, combat those highs and lows mm -hmm. so something that kim and i actually did this week was that we set up like a structure for like how we like our day so i wanted to ask you like just like how we like our day things that we like doing like that we need to do every day like it could be something as simple as like yo i just need to play call of duty for an hour every day like just different things that we give ourselves in the day that like help us mentally combat the highs and lows so i wanted to wrap with you see what are some of the things that you do being a trainer for the highs and lows? Uh, that's a good question. I think for me, I, I do turn to physical activity a lot to kind of center myself when it comes right. to, you know, those moments of anxiety or confusion or, or anything, just not feeling like myself. I do turn to that. Uh, something that's really therapeutic for me is also cooking. Okay, okay. I feel like, I, I feel very like in in a world where you don't have much control, and that's a hard thing to really realize. Except. Is that you don't have a lot of control over the things you think you do. Right. Cooking, you do. When you're uh, working out or doing something physical, you do to a certain extent. And it doesn't mean it's a bad thing because you wanna be in those situations that you can control. It just kind of, for me, is a, like a leveling to a certain extent. It's like right. grounding in this world. Nothing is really, you know, un under my control, but these very like small instances are, and yeah. I value that and take that same kind of confidence out into the world and, you know, feel better and feel centered. I like that. So just taking things. So like, I was actually listening to this uh, guy and he does like a mindset reset. And he said the exact same thing you said, like mm -hmm. we have no control over anything. Right. Yeah. But we can control the things that we do like, like you can control the cook, the entire cooking process and you can control the, like how intense your workout is. Right. And like, so like for people who like me, like you, everyone has like a control kind of thing. It's, it would be great to like factor in things in our day in which we can control. It will satisfy that feeling. Yeah. I think that's a good thing. I think it's a healthy way too. you know, absolutely. You can't control your relationships. You can't control the people you're in relationships with. You can't control your friends. To a certain extent, you, there's not much that you're really in control of. You right. know, make a concerted effort to be in positions to where they come out lucratively for us. But ultimately, even if we control that, we, we don't control the day-to-day. -day. You know, we're basically just trying to, like, keep our head above water. Right. The game, plan that we can. But you know what they say, you know, man makes a plan and God laughs. And you know, he literally thinks it's hysterical. I, it's not even funny to me though. I don't laugh. <laughs> I, I'm not laughing. I'm like, yo, my man. But um, I, did, I was doing some research and I put up like this little article 
and it was just talking about like dealing with the highs and lows and they were suggesting like certain things um and if it would open for me wanted us to share a couple of things and it's literally some of the things that we've mentioned um in terms of like being active mm -hmm. like sticking to a routine like figuring out your routine i'm sure I, I know you have a routine because you train early in the morning and then you have a you have a gap in between the day so like you've like how important is your routine to you uh in the past has been very important i i don't think it is so far now and not in a bad way i'm still right. a, you know like you know pretty i plan i like to plan things um i right. like things in my calendar so i don't forget i like to write things down so i don't forget but i i'm not a slave to it like i probably have no definitely not a slave this is not about being a slave to routine it's more like like just knowing like yo like m less of a routine and i think more of a structure right like of like the course of your day like yo, I normally go to bed around these times. I wake up around this time. Like, I I can't really be a robot to time, because then I'd be obsessed. But like, if I have a structure in which I know that things can fall into, like what time I want to sit down and relax, what time I want to read, whatever the case may be, like that kind of routine, that kind of structure really helps. Because then like your mind won't wander. So, it, like, it, it helps a lot, and it you know just helps you know keep you on track, keeps you responsible, um, you know. The, the older you get, the more every single step and every single decision is just like heavier and weighs more. So it's important to, you know, plan out certain stuff and make sure that you're not forgetting certain important life things while also not being, you know, a slave to your routine. And a lot Absolutely. of people are slaves to their routine because they are not putting, you know, enough energy into themselves. Like there's no self-care. There's no, you know. Right. So that's a part of that's like what yeah. we would do. Put like in your, in your structure of your day, like put something for yourself like kim so like kim and i would do like a thing she like put a little thing where like now before bed she takes like 35 minutes to do her little skincare routine but that's just something that she likes to do Thirty minutes not 30 minutes but like she's washing her face she's brushing her teeth she's setting up her retainers she's whatever but like it's the 30 minutes to yourself i feel i hear that you i know? do um all right enough of that but what's like a Cause I feel like men and women have different things that we do, I guess, like to like recenter. Right. Like a woman will have like a skincare routine and like a guy will, what, what would a guy do? It, that is so funny because when we were making this, she was like, yeah, I need this amount of time. I'm like, cool. I need like five minutes to wash my face, brush my teeth. And yeah, you know I mean, I only need one hand to do all of that. I do. All that. <laughs> I brush with my right, wash my face with my right. Right. Like, it's, it's different for us. Maybe longer with my hair since I have hair. Yo, your hair looks good today, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Like did I, you do it? Huh? You did it yourself? Uh, yeah, I lined it up. Oh, wow. Like a little, little tape of myself. I didn't feel like going to the barber last week. Yo, you know, I don't know what the feeling is. I know the feeling after a fresh cut. Well, I was going to say, uh -huh. I know the feeling of leaving a barbershop after a fresh cut, right? Like, you know how I feel. You, you know how we all feel, Absolutely. right? But I don't know that feeling of giving myself a fresh lineup and walking out the crib. That has to be different. I, it's it's not as it's not as satisfying because you did it yourself. So it's like you did the work. It's not like you were just like sitting down. You were being pampered because essentially, like right, right, right. The pamper feeling. Yeah, a man version of pampering is like going to the. Bar. I actually did want to talk about that today too. Yeah, what about it's being pampered? No. Okay, so. Right, men and women. Women go to the salon, uh -huh. right? And I've been frequenting the salon down here just to get, you know, Manny petty self-care, whatever. Okay. And, you know, what goes on in nail salons never happens at barbershops. Expound. The drama. <laughs> no, there's no drama. Huh? No, I, I mean, I haven't seen drama in barbershops. Like, the barbershop I go to right now is probably the longest I've ever gone to, like, a single barber. Right. And that's right. Because like the barber I have is actually like on time and reliable. Yeah, that's our issues. Those are our issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. If you are time issues, I'm not fucking with you. I'm not. You're not getting my money at all. Or right. my. Um, but most of the conversations there are about you know sports. Same shit. Sports. Uh, there's one guy that's like really big into stocks, so it's about that also. 
Um, but yeah, salons are the breeding ground of drama. Like those are the breeding grounds of your nigga ain't shit. Yo, Kim was filling me in yeah. on just what like it's beef in there. Like it's beef from the moment you get in. If Shorty doesn't do your nails right, and I'm like, yo, like if your barber messes up your hair, like is it beef or is it like yo, damn, you messed me up, dog? I think it's beef. It just depends on how bad it is. Like if he if he takes oh, yeah. And like a little lower than you wanted because that did happen to me a few months ago when I like I was short sick <laughs> and it got like a little lower than I wanted it to be and I was like yo I didn't want it this low um and that was, yeah that's it uh and then but I've never had a situation where like somebody left with, like a ball spot in my head or like pushed oh, yeah. back or anything like that because then then that would be a problem so I, I guess so I guess that's like, the issue. issue yeah and like women in their hair and their salon shit and their nails, like that's that's like a code red if that shit gets fucked up. Yeah, it's just not so rowdy in 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 the barbershops as it is in the nail salons. No, nah, not at all. Not at that's all. all. That's all. Um, what else we got? The last thing I wanted to talk about was holidays are coming up. Yes, they are. Um, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Is is this your um first holiday round robin? What do you mean? With your significant other? This is our first holiday, yes. Very nice. We will not um be, we won't be like in the same space. Like she'll be with her family in Atlanta. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. I was gonna ask later down the road, right? Like, how do you decide whose crib we're going to? Like wh- who gets what holiday? Do we go to both? Like, how does that work? I think you gotta make I mean, I think that's a problem for us maybe next year. Right. Uh, as opposed to as opposed to this year, no, I'm, not this year. I'm, but I mean, in just in general, um, I, I think it's a compromise. I think it's what's right. more convenient. Who's closer? Who got the best food? Who got the biggest house? Right. TV. I think it's all. I think it's all convenience. Like you can buy. You know, if you got a family member that you know, like that has the the black and white CV set up in the kitchen, and that's the only t- source of entertainment, you could stop by and say what's up and grab a pumpkin pie. <laughs> But you know, yeah, that pie is fire though. The, the the house with the TV in the kitchen, the small one, yeah, absolutely big facts. That's pie. That's where the best baked goods come from. My like, grandmother had a TV in the kitchen. Like my, my auntie, auntie got that. It's in the kitchen. Like that's where the best food comes from. You watch Prices Right and yeah, get, that shit. That is luxurious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different. The uh, best meals too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I right, guess so. Here are the two topics I set out to your boy. Uh, over the past week. Uh, one topic, so we all know, I'm, I'm trying to stay away from like the Trump stuff, but we all know like the MAGA maniacs, they were in D.C. Uh, in Florida. They were, they, were, they were marching in Florida also? I seen a protest. Like I wanted I wanted to record it, but I was had to make a left. So, But they were on the corner and they were walling. And people were honking and I'm like, y'all niggas lost. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, they, they don't take their, they don't take their L's well. Um, so yeah, so they had this whole like MAGA march and apparently, like, there were protesters and counter-protesters that were fighting each other in D.C. There's videos all over the news. Oh, I saw this. So spicy. Um, but they did have a common thing that they both fucked with and they both liked. Um, there was a strip club, I guess, like, somewhere in D.C., where uh, the police were outside the strip club trying to make sure there were no fights and nothing happening outside the club. Um, a quote from the article, they denounced each other for hours. Saturday, as thousands of Trump supporters rallied in Washington, where they were met by hundreds of counter protesters. There were clashes that uh, featured profanity and punches, shouts, and shoves. Then, in front of Archibald's Gentlemen's Club, Archie's Archibald's is a wild name for a gentleman's club. Archie's is wild. Archie's. I'm going on. Ar- that makes you. I'm going Archie's. Archie's with some titties. Um, in front of Archie's uh, Gentlemen's Club, the two founds found something they both believed in exotic dancing. And of course, the Bronx's own Cardi B. So they were able to stop fighting and really come together over strippers, hot wings, and Cardi B. And it was Cardi. That's the most, uh, the music. They were playing Cardi B's music. Oh, they were playing Cardi B and they was going crazy. They were going ham. And I feel like a little ass. Take it to the flow. Take it to the flow. I know that boy. It's an American thing, right? Like it yeah. had Bonding. Together and like bonding over strippers. Strippers. It's a very common... It, it's like we see no color. <laughs> There's no conservative uh liberal when it comes to, I guess, like strippers and women women on the pole. 
So I get it. And I feel like this is how like things should be in life. How many, I mean, yeah. parties have you been? But the thing is, this is different because like even I've been to parties where the ratio is like 10 women to one man and niggas are still fighting because they're stupid. Yeah, naturally. Well, stupid. it's because, I mean, who are the other five look, you know? They got to look at the other joints. They're probably fighting over the, you know, you know what they're fighting over. Now they're fighting because their Timberlands got scuffed. That's where they're fighting. Also they're another reason. Fighting over dumb shit. It's Tim season, huh? Almost. It is. Oh, it is. We are in the middle of Tim season. Absolutely. New York, New York. New York. <laughs> is it? It's not Tim season in uh in Florida. Well, my boy lives down there. My boy Corey. Well, I got Birkenstocks on right now. What do you mean? <laughs> it's Birkenstock season, kids. Nobody needed to see your feet. Nobody. <laughs> it's Berkey season. It's always Berkey season. Always Berkey season for you. Respect. Yes. yes. Indeed. Yes. But um. Be- um Thing. No, that that is a very common ground, man. You go to all across the world, but it does make me question, like the white guys who be at the black strip clubs, because I'd be like, yo, why, uh, like, I mean, where else would they? Where else should they be? The white strip clubs ain't shit. We know that, but do y'all like the black women though? <laughs> they like to look. Okay, got it. Because I, I just want to know what it. I just want to know what it is, and that's cool. I get it. Me too. You know, they fetishize black women. They sexualize, you know, black women and Latino women. So, you know, like to them, it's it's just like purely a sexual thing. They don't respect their mind or their intellect. It's just how- Right. It's, yeah. Okay. That's really good. That was good, Trev. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. You in tune with the tunes. I'm in tune with a lot of things. Indeed. <laughs> 35 is a lot. 35 years is a long time. Yeah. That's a fact. You old as shit. It's a long time. I'm old as fuck. Yep. Heard you. <laughs> Another story that stood out to me, Trist- yes, Mike. <laughs> Hot Mike. Uh, <laughs> Tristan Thompson, uh, of course, of you know, Cavaliers fame and champion over the world. Yeah, you better call him a champion. <laughs> and listen, anything you say about Tristan Thompson, you better say he's a champion first. I res- I, I definitely acknowledge that. Can he was on Keeping Up with the Kardashians and he was apologizing to Chris Jenner. Chloe Kardashian's mother, Chloe being his baby mama, who he's cheated on with multiple women. Oh, you know, when I read this, I thought you said Caitlyn Jenner. So I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was like Christian is wild. Oh, no, no, no. He, he was a Chris Jenner um, for basically like cheating on his daughter, cheating on her daughter, and, you know, just like basically breaking up the family. Uh, when Tristan apologized, he says, when I hurt her with all the actions I did, it really affected me a lot because of how much I let you down and our relationship. You viewed me as a son, so that's what the part that was the part that was really sad. So you sorry to Chloe? Are you, are you sorry to Chris Jenner? I think I think you're sorry to both. I think you're sorry to both. Do you feel uh, sorry though? Like if 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 you cheat on Shorty and you, I guess, are trying to reconcile, do you have to apologize to her parents? <laughs> I'm just asking. That's right. But, okay, wait, hold on. I don't... Um, Chris Jenner, okay, is a different type of mom-in-law. Like, she runs a very... T- it's a business over there. So I understand why he's apologizing to Chris Jenner because, like, she does not really tolerate the BS. Like, but in general, like, it depends. If we're going to reconcile... That's a nice gesture. Yeah. But, like, also, like... That's a very, that's big, but also not really like, do I owe y'all something? Like, I don't know. I don't know. It really depends on your relationship with the parents. How about that? Well, I, I, I think it's, I think they were close. Right. I mean, from what, yeah, from what they say, it seems like he was close. And uh, Tristan was at Kim, at Kim Kardashian's birthday party last month also. So I think he's trying to like get back in the good graces of Chloe and of the family. So I think it's I think I don't know, I think it's a noble thing to do. I don't think it's a noble thing to, you know, kiss your girlfriend's little sister's best friend at a party. I don't think that's the best thing to do. But when it happens off the tequila. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> that's his excuse. I'm not giving that excuse. Stan, that's his excuse. It's not a good one. Nah. And I mean, you know, Jordan Woods is Jordan Woods. She looks how she looks. So it is what it is. But yeah, I, I think it's good. I think it's cool that he apologized. Yeah, I think that's I think that's big, you know. And I, like, I really do believe it's based on your relationship. And he clearly had that relationship where they had like that view. And so then, yeah, you let her down. Apologize to her for sure. 
That's, 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 a, that's a very big thing to do. I respect that. I think it's necessary. Huh? I, big facts. I think it's necessary. Yeah. It, yes, for sure. Mom. And that's true. And the and the boyfriend that's twenty years younger than the mom, and and just protect the bag at all times. Uh, I mean, Chris, Tristan is good. Tristan doesn't need their money. Nah, he doesn't. But like you know, his brand can go with the wind right. if he doesn't play nice. What's the Tristan Thompson brand? Ah, nasty. The <laughs> nasty brand, right? That's what his brand is. His brand. <laughs> he has a, he has a nasty brand. Seen that video of him like motorboating shakes in the back of a nightclub, like not thinking there was any cameras. He just had his face in this girl's chest, just like motorboating the chest. It was. You gotta it, just go to the telly. No, niggas don't like apartments or hotels. They just want to do everything out in public. That was DJ Mr. C's problem. Like, what is that? I don't know. People don't have apartments. Like in the latest season of Power, everybody just has sex at their at work. Nobody goes home to have sex. Really. Everybody just fucks in the, they, they're on like- Are you sure you're watching Power? Absolutely. I told you. How I was it? I like it. Do you? Doesn't mean it's good, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna kick that on. So on a, uh, yeah, watch the first five episodes are streaming now. It starts again in December. It's on the, the mid-season break like they like to do. Yo, I was supposed to be a drug dealer on Power. Really? Yes. Damn, what happened? COVID. Ah, shit. Literally, like supposed to be a drug. I'm so sick, but I, but I'm I'm on the next. I'm on the next. But I'm supposed to, like not like a popping drug dealer. I'm supposed to be on the corner. And, and hey, the- Tariq. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Handing out dime bags. Copy that. Out dime bags. So yeah, cool. That was. But, um, it's coming. It's coming. Oh, awesome, awesome. We're looking forward to that. So um, for our next topic, guys, we're gonna give you five tips for handling your first holiday together as a couple. Now, this is from an article that I read from at Self Magazine by a writer by the name of Jenna Birch. We want to give everybody their credit. Um, Holidays are coming up. If you're in a new relationship or even if you're in an old one, there are certain things you got to know and certain ways you have to navigate meeting and interacting with your partner's family. Fact. Guess what? Shit can go left real fast. Boy. Extremely quickly. Uh, So the first, step one, clarify the relationship up front. Are you really his girlfriend? Are you really her boyfriend? <laughs> is that, like, are you both aware of what your relationship is? Or are you just here for a good meal? Or a good time? Or, or not a long meal. time. Not a long time. What's up, my man Drake? <laughs> Certified lover boy. Soon, right? I know you can't wait. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's really important to clarify the relationship. Nobody wants to, you know, drag a, like a guy that doesn't take them seriously to meet their mom and dad and grandma. Correct. Indeed. Clar- I'm with that. Clarify where you guys are at. Where do we stand? What are we, what are we doing? What, what are we? What are we? Ooh. But don't press, it, don't press each other about the what are we. Like, because then they say, you know? Yeah, but pre- I mean, is it really, it's not pressing to ask somebody what we are. Have you ever asked what are we? No, 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 no. It's not wrong to ask that question, but don't press it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so what are we? Did you not hear my? Did you have you ever asked a woman what are we? Trevor, you know exactly who I'm talking to. <laughs> I've never asked. <laughs> I've never. What are we? No. <laughs> what are we, fam? I, bro, why'd you even get me started? I'm just asking if you've ever asked a woman what are we. Nah, but yo, what are we doing here? That's a what are we? No, it's not a what are we. It's <laughs> it's not. So what's the difference? What's a what are we doing here? What's that? <laughs> Like, what are we doing? Location? <laughs> like, why are we at this Popeyes and not the one in Hempstead? Is that what, that's what we're doing is? No. What are we doing? Like, what are we? And what are we doing? Is It has to be two separate things. Like, I'm not looking. See how they're different. I'm not asking. What are we? It's like, what is our label? Okay. What are we doing? Just tell me what we're doing. Yo, we're kicking it. It's different for me. Response to what are we? We're kicking it. Ah. It's the way the questions are presented. Maybe one and because the way to me this is weird. The way the question I presented one is like you have, yo, know, what are we doing? What are like what are we? It's two different questions. Never mind. Next next topic. <laughs> so the next step in making sure your first holiday as a couple goes well, no surprises. Do not just pop up at the family shindig with some new and you have not prepped 
the crowd. You have not prepped the population. Don't do that. It is a formula for disaster. You will get crazy looks. He or she will get crazy looks. Make sure everyone's in on the plan. No surprises. Everyone has that one cousin who surprises everyone every holiday, though. Absolutely. Big fact. I, I just don't get what, like, what is this about? Like, you couldn't just, why, why are you surprising us every time? We're- that just hurts the person you bring, too, because they expect some, they might expect you to be solo. They might expect you, they might expect a whole different person. Right. And- They're not even prepped. Like, oh, wow. Okay. Where's Samantha? Right. Don't do that to yourself because they're going to ask you where so and so You know someone's going to ask you where so-and-so is. Absolutely. Indeed. And I think this, this coincides with our next step, set boundaries. Um, if you are not in the place to discuss marriage, children, or living together, ask your family not to bring it up. So if you bring, you know, your girl or your guy to Thanksgiving dinner and the first question out of your grandma's mouth is, when are you guys getting married? And the only time that you guys have spent together has been on FaceTime and in hookah bars. That is not the discussion you want to have. You know that telling your grandma that means nothing to her. You know that because she will still ask. No, no, not mine. Well, not yours, but most grandmas will be like, ah, yeah, I got you. So, <laughs> so somebody's going to get that off. I mean, that's, I mean, that's why it's like set boundaries, right? Because like you love your family, but... You also don't want them creating like a tough situation for no, you. Absolutely. That's like, it's very important. Like, I feel like if, if you tell them, they'll hold you down. Absolutely. And then you also don't want your, the person that you're bringing your company to feel overwhelmed or uh, out of place or nervous or disrespected. So um, all that stuff is really important. Indeed. All right. All right. Uh, next, step four, explain the, fam- the family, explain the family dynamics to your partner. Explain that you might have an auntie that's a little bit crazy, that drinks a little bit too much during the holidays, throws back a little bit too much brown liquor, and might get drunk and say some shit. Like, make sure you're setting your partner up for success and not to be, I guess, like, you know, feel embarrassed around weird people. Because everybody's got weird people in their family. Or you got to have the 30 seconds in the car where you're like, yo, okay, this is what we're about to walk into. Or however long it will take to explain, but you got to prep before walking in. I feel you got to prep like the whole week, honestly. It's just a, it's just a week of preparation. Yeah, absolutely. We're, you should start now, actually. If you're, if you're having holidays for the first time with your significant other, you guys should start now. Right now. I actually, started a week ago. Start- actually, yo, next week's Thanksgiving? Next week is... No, next, uh, is next week's Thanksgiving? Next week's Thanksgiving, dog. Definitely Thanksgiving. Wow. That wow. Was, that was quick. Wow. I'm sick. Indeed. <laughs> I thought I had more time. Huh? Your Thanksgiving plans? Um, we, well, depending on COVID, Kim's mom should be flying up, um, and then we'll be going to her uncle's house down here in Fort in Florida. Oh, so you're staying down there? Yes, sir. Hey, that's uh, that's different for you. But we will be home for Christmas. Okay. You okay. so you see it, flipping it, mixing it. Right, look at y'all navigating life. So proud. Listen, man. So proud. It's up to me, I'll be in the bed. Okay. <laughs> nah, that's what we're doing. Awesome. That's a great move. Um, the last one, and one I think is probably the most important, press pause on all arguments. Uh, we all have full-blown arguments from time to time, but you know what isn't cute? Fighting in front of loved ones. That is not yeah, cute. man. To have like that awkward silence, or you know, you basically with your eyes across the room looking at your shorty and being like, fuck you. And she's looking back and she's being like, fuck you too. Everybody can hear Every, that. Yo. Everybody can hear that. <laughs> Every single person. Everyone can hear it. There's not one person that can't hear you at being visibly upset with your partner as you sit and listen to like the little kids play and open gifts and eat dinner and cut. And you're sitting there like this. Exactly. Like I'm just here so I won't get fined. Peep the hands though. Peep the hands. Oh, when it's when it's an arm when it's an arms cross. Oh my god! It's on the phone the entire time. Ooh, that's no, that's sick, sick. Nothing boils my blood more. (laughs) I feel you. I feel you on that. So those are the those are five tips uh, to getting (laughs) for your first holiday with your significant partner. Those were solid, man. I think the key that I pulled from that was preparation. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. You got to prep. Like you got to yeah. know who the crazy uncle is, who the uh, the fire the firecracker cousin is, because everybody's got that cousin. has got a short fuse. Um, the person yeah. to get drunk, the person that can't cook. Like don't eat that dish. Eat that one. Uh, it's just really don't take seconds. Don't take. Don't take seconds. No, Mm-mm. and don't eat that unless you want to spend the next forty five minutes on the toilet. Hey now. Why why are we still eating this meal every Thanksgiving? It's really the question. <laughs> I think it's just tradition, right? You don't want to make anybody feel bad. You don't tell people to stop cooking. Who who can you really, like really look at and be like, hey, stop cooking that? You can't do that. Yo, we're gonna have to have a conversation about honesty one day. Oh, we can have it next episode. Yeah, let's talk about honesty next episode because it's like, yo, like a, like honesty. Well, Nobody wants to hurt anybody's feelings. No one wants to hurt anybody's feelings. But like, yo, if if the sweet potato whatever pie is not good, you know what? Everything's it's okay. That's why I don't be having no conversations no more. Because <laughs> I might think it's trash, but you might not. So salute. But um, it's really trash. Be honest. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Too. That's cool. <laughs> All right, so uh, last up, guys, of course, we got sports. Sports, sports, sports. Breaking news, bre- breaking news, breaking news. Chris Paul has been traded what? to... Yeah. Get out of here. Chris Paul is going to... The, he's a Valley boy. He's going to the Suns. It had, hold on, wait. That just happened? That just happened, Cuzzo. Oh, man. Chris Paul and Abdel Nador to the Suns. Oh, damn. What happened? This is breaking news, guys. Damn. Else. You know what's so sad about this trade? Kelly Oubre spearheaded Valley Boys. What do you mean? Okay, so like the Suns just dropped their new uniform. Like they like because the Suns were such a young team, they all became like bros and they called themselves the Valley Boys and they were like doing this thing like that, like hashtag this and this and that. So when the Suns just released their new uniform on Friday, it's the new Valley Boys uniform. Okay. And Kelly Oubre just did an entire photo shoot around the Valley Boys. And today, he is a Oklahoma City Thunder. I'm sick. I'm sick. I mean, what is this? I know. But I'm sick. Yeah. What do you think this does for the Suns? This is finally get them, like, over the hump, get them to the playoffs. Because it's... Um, I was going from, like... He's just going to a very similar situation where he's like a veteran on a young team that carries into the playoffs. And it seems like this is the same type of situation. And Phoenix, veteran, young team, carry them to the playoffs. That's it. Yeah. Different colors. I mean, but like, it looks like the Suns are trying to build something. Not with Chris Paul being as old as he is. I think, I, I think they're trying to put themselves in a position to contend. Chris Paul had a great season last year. Like, so they just need a leader. I think they're trying to clear space so they can bring more players, like better players. In. I think the Suns make the playoffs with Chris Paul. Um, losing Kelly Oubre from a scoring perspective is, is going to be tough. I don't think they do, actually. What do you mean? The West is too stacked. Because here's the teams, here's the teams that didn't make the playoffs last year from the West. The Golden State Warriors. You're right. The Memphis Grizzlies. The Phoenix Suns. You know what I'm saying? The Dallas, like, I mean, not the Dallas Mavericks, but like those three. And they're solid. And the Pelicans. And the Pelicans, right? So you have, so like, it's not just like, oh, you got CP3 and it's a cakewalk, you know, because. But then OKC, so you got to take OKC out because they're not making the, play, making the playoffs this year again. Cool. I still got three other teams that were on the cusp of playoff door. That's true. You know, I just think the West is a little bit, like, I don't think it's sweet in the West. Like, you have to make real, like, to contend in the West right now, you got to make. Again, huh? Rockets, because Chris, because both Russell Westbrook and James Harden went out, so Rockets probably out the playoffs again. So that's two. There's two spots now. Two spots, but we don't know where they're going. That's the Thunder. They're gonna go. To, they're gonna come east. I feel like they're gonna come east. I feel like the Knicks are gonna do some dumb shit and get Russell Westbrook on the team. And you don't want that. Fuck no, I don't want Russell Westbrook on the Knicks. It's not. It's it's a. It's not a move. I, I'm not a fan of and coaches making moves that don't. Win that don't like lead to you winning a championship. Right, right, right. Don't waste my time. That's exactly. They do that. They do the Knicks do that though. They They'll be like very, 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 very long time. Yeah. So we'll like, grab y'all this person, but good luck. Exactly. So I'm not a fan of that, but I do think they come east. James Harden wants to play for the Nets. 
I don't know how that's going to work. That's a lot of dribbling. I, I think I commented that when I seen it. I was like, yo, fam, impossible. That is a lot of dribbling. Im- impossible. Enough basketballs in Brooklyn for that. And it's less of KD and more of Kyrie and James. Impossible. Well, KD's going to want to get his touches also. I know, and, he, and those are his. But it's impossible because Kyrie and James cannot. They split the same touches. Well, I mean, James can play point guard. And James can play a very good point guard. Didn't he lead the league in a So can Kyrie? No, not, not like James Harden can. James, no, J- James, James is a better point guard, obviously. And Kyrie. And but James wants to get his shots up. Kyrie's going to not. The thing is, like, Kyrie's not going to be comfortable understanding he's the third best player on the team. Because James Harden goes to Brooklyn, Kyrie's the third best player on the team. Naturally. Naturally. You're looking at two MVPs, so yeah. Huh? He's not going to be okay with that. Yeah. yeah, that's not happening. Shut that down. It would be interesting, though. Lakers, Dennis Schroeder. Dramatic standpoint. Yeah, they're, they're in, the, in, the, in the running to get Dennis Schroeder. They got uh, it already. It's done. It's done? How are you getting all this, all this news? You got to update your, your, your ESPN. This is us. Oh, so, they, so that, okay, so that trade is official. It's so, official. Yeah, they got a lot of scoring off the bench now. They sent Danny Green packing. Danny Green in a, in a first-round draft pick. It's good. Puts him in a position, a very good position to repeat. Very great, man. Indeed. I'm I'm excited. Um, we need shoot. We need we need like a good like. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we need like a. We need we need something else though. It's hard for me to think about what the Lakers need because they got a lot. We have a lot. That's why I was just like mumbling my words because I'm like, yo, we have a lot, but like we need something though. That's clear. I don't know. I, I don't know what the Lakers need. They got Dennis Schroeder that's scoring off the bench. That is, he's a more versatile scorer than Danny Green. Not as good a shooter, but a more versatile scorer than Danny Green. He can uh, get a bucket. He, he still get. Got, oh, I love that he can get a bucket. Ah, oh, yeah. Dennis. Indeed. Dennis is nice. You know, LeBron is LeBron. Hey, well, one thing I really wanted to touch on, uh, the NBA schedule. No All-Star game on that NBA schedule. They got an All-Star break, but no All-Star game. How you feel about? I didn't see that. Yeah, they said the. I mean, well, that'd be great for Valentine's Day weekend because always though, yo, huh? it's always a conflict on Valentine's Day weekend. If you had, if you were with somebody, and it was All Star Weekend and Valentine's Day, man, that was tough. Fam, I love you so hard, but one time a year, you know what I mean. The boys get together and they start doing tricks and dunks and yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, can we just watch? Can I just watch this game? I, it's only a few hours. I remember, I, I remember one year I was dating somebody and like Valentine's Day was All Star Weekend and she wanted to do like all this like sweet and romantic stuff. So I did. I went to the max, spent time, listened to <sighs> stuff up until it was game time, because then like she wanted to turn the TV off, and I was like. But it's an all star game. And the thing is, I thought I put enough time, enough equity in those in that day leading up to the all star game where I thought, like, I'll, I'll just be left alone. During yeah, the- you, got, you had to make that clear. That but this no- is what I'm doing for this reason. Games it- on at 10. But when I think about no all star game, I think about all the Instagram models and how they're going to cope with this. <laughs> They'll be in Tulum. But I feel like. I feel like with some women who live that type of life, All Star Weekend is like a part of their like yearly budget. Yeah, it's like it's it's factored in, and their income is like it's a line item. All Star Weekend, John Wall is in town. <laughs> like that 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 just has to be something they plan on, right? Dougie, hey, yeah, it's 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 factored in, but they're gonna figure something out. They're gonna they're gonna throw something. We'll see. We'll see. What the mo- I, didn't, I didn't realize there was no All Star game. Something help? Huh? That the models are gonna figure something out of the players <laughs> or the NBA. <laughs> all three of them. All three of them. <laughs> They're gonna have a beating. A joint venture. Joint venture. IG models. Yeah. Hoopers and um, Adam Silver. That's, oh my gosh, Adam Silver in the Instagram <laughs> model meeting. <laughs> Bro, the guy is literally a genius. Oh, he, he can figure out any situation. He's going to look at Bernie's Burgos and be like, all right, so listen, no All-Star Weekend, but they do have five days off, and they're all going to be in Tulum. 
Go crazy. Go crazy. Do what you got to do. Yeah, James Harden has approved this plan. Um, <laughs> James, James, be, James can't come to New York. Why not? Gonna be at the. He gonna be at the spots. He gonna be uptown. Oh yeah, James, yo, James Harden uptown would it would be so fucking hilarious to me. He I, would hate it. <laughs> he, you think he would hate it? Why would he hate it? He would hate the traffic getting uptown. That's what I really meant. I just, I'm like, yo, he's from Houston. Like, driving uptown is the worst. I don't. But he would. I don't feel like James Harden has a problem waiting in traffic for Dominicans. I don't think James Harden has an issue waiting in traffic for Dominican women in uptown. I don't think he does. No. I don't think James Harden has that issue, but you know. <laughs> no, I, I don't foresee that being an issue. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Kyrie be in Jersey with the Dominicans, though. No, Kyrie is in the Hamptons with the white women. That's what Kyrie is. That's Kyrie Steez. You didn't see that picture when he was on a yacht? When nah. Kyrie was partying on a yacht, and there was no, no trace of color anywhere. Just but, bunnies. Just all bunnies. All bunnies. No black women, no Spanish women, nothing. Could all... be my boat. Huh? Could be my boat. Oh, could not be my boat either. The widest I... thing on my boat would be the boat. I mean, you know, that's, I, that, that's his taste. That's his taste. Good for him. Salute. You can have all of them. Um, <laughs> the one last um, story I saw that was really funny to me, just because it's football players, um, the Detroit Lions, their head coach is named Matt Patricia. So there was a rumor that came out that at the end of their end of his first season in Detroit, the team celebrated the end of the season because they realized they wouldn't have to see him again for a few months because they hated, they hated playing for him. Um, One of the players says there was a lot of fun. You all have fun because I am gone and they didn't want to deal with the, the coach anymore. And I thought the way they celebrated was crazy because they celebrated with mimosas. A group of 250-pound linebackers and defensive tackles celebrated the end of the season. Orange se- juice with pulp? Or- <laughs> <laughs> celebrated the end of the season with orange juice and, um, and champagne. And, jam- and the champs. Who, who, who was the curator of the – like, who was like, yo, get the mimosas? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just don't – it's very hard for me to picture like a guy ending a football game, like playing 60 minutes, getting tackled, doing tackling, bloody sore. And he's holding like this little like stem, 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 stem mimosa glass and just like cheers. Che- I, I, it, it cheers, was- season's over. Cheers. Exact- See, exactly. Exactly. You know, how went. you know exactly how that went. Indeed. Like it was like bottomless. It was like it's a bottomless mimosa. <laughs> Bo- no bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> it was just I just thought it was a weird way for football players to celebrate no bottoms is crazy but that's what bottomless means <laughs> to me it means there's no bottom no bottom and you figure like football players end the game and they go back to the locker room they, they probably don't have on bottoms and they just like have these mimosas. stop stop <laughs> these mimosas just like throwing back these mimosas bottomless so mad football players in compression shorts drinking mimosas I just think I just, that's a wild visual to me. I need something. That's a crazy visual. <laughs> that's a crazy visual. Ray Lewis just like slurping down a mimosa after a game. Face paint? With the, fa- with the face paint on. It sounds like a spa date, to be honest. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. They all got in a hot tub together and just like poured mimosas. Oh, my now that they wouldn't have to be around the coach. Exactly. Did that coach come back for next season? He's still coaching right now. He's still uh, their head coach. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of the players that couldn't stand his guts aren't with the team anymore, but I, I, just, I, just, I just thought it was a wild visual because as an adult man, I've never, like, I've had mimosas, of course. I've had mimosas in life. Like, a few of them are delicious. I've but had mimosas, of course. I've had mimosas. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you did. <laughs> That's what you just did. I didn't do all that. You put sauce on that shit. I didn't do all yeah, that. Yeah, you... We could play the same back. You said, I had most, of course. I had most of most. <laughs> it's a plenty of tasty, delicious, delicious mimosas. Like. Anyway. Yeah, I've had mimosas before. But I've given up on mimosas. I told you that, right? What do you mean? Why'd you give up? I've given up on alcohol, actually. I don't do it no more. Really? Yeah, this is breaking not. news. But, like, I'll do beer. But, like, wine. Giving up on alcohol. <laughs> I've given up on hard liquor. <laughs> 
I would do no. I've given up on alcohol. It's not I, like I would do Angry Orchard. So like, do you count that? Are you counting that? There's alcohol. Ooh. Okay. Well, all I do is Angry Orchards, and even then, I don't even like it. I just given up on alcohol. You honestly, took so many L's to tequila. I've just. It's not even like tequila one. Like it's really not even like tequila one. Okay. I would have probably have beaten tequila in every battle or the mimosas for that matter. Not but, tequila in every battle. Don't say that. No, not every battle. But I would I would have done better these rounds. But literally, my body rejects alcohol, so it's like, nah. My body's been progressively like rejecting alcohol because I don't drink during the week. So yeah, there's no way you can process Hennessy the way you used to. Oh, absolutely not. No, I'd be like. You ever far Wall Street when yeah, of course he leaves the club and he's high and he's like dragging himself to his car. That's you drink too much Hennessy. That's that's you on the hand. Uh, when was the last time you had some hen? Um, my birthday. Okay. Fair yeah, fair. yeah, my birthday. <laughs> Nothing since. I, I a whiskey. I love. I love. I can throw back some whiskey. Okay. No problem. J Mo. Uh, J either J Mo or Jack Daniels. Um, if you know, I'm on a budget, Jim Beam. Okay. Those, indeed. Ice. Uh, yeah. Usually, I mean, sometimes, sometimes on the rock, sometimes straight, sometimes a little ginger. You gotta like squeeze like the real ginger in there, and you're good. That's official. Yeah. Still nasty. No, nah, it's good. Delicious. <sighs> indeed. You see how? I, you see why I can't tell people the truth about their cooking? Because I literally think it's nasty. <laughs> But it's cool. The thing is, like, I just don't eat people's. I don't eat everybody's cooking. I'll try. I'm more open to trying things now. But just yeah. throughout life, I've like, I'll just get the screw face, and you know, I don't want to try your food. Now, it's, and people would think it's rude because they'd be like, "Hey, yeah. can you try this?" I was like, "No, no, thank you. I'm full. I'm good." And I'm like, "No, come on. Why don't you want to try it?" And I was like, "Because I don't want to. I don't want to eat it. Leave me alone." <laughs> people have to understand, Trevor. I was spoiled as a kid when it came to food because i would go to right. kindergarten like they, they would the kindergarten teacher told my grandmother that she shouldn't give us breakfast because they want all the kids to sit together and eat breakfast and like become friends and like have a sense of community and my grandmother's like he's not gonna eat your food so what you want me to do <laughs> community or feed the children fuck you community i'm hungry yeah give my man some goodies what, what grandma made you uh, pancakes, waffles, bacon, <laughs> almost every morning. Then Saturday morning, we got like the special big break. We were, my brother and I were very, very spoiled when it came to the breakfast. Very Saturday spoiled. morning, big body breakfast. Boy, who are you talking to? Uh, Saturday morning, big body. With the cartoons on, with the X-Men, <sighs> Spider-Man. Those are the days. Oh, man, I miss those days. Great days. Fact. Saturday morning cartoons are ass now. The fuck is a SpongeBob, bro? What? I don't even. I, I don't even watch television. <laughs> I pay for cable though. That's the thing. I pay for cable, and I'm hard, and I'm hardly ever home. Do you know why I pay for cable? This is the only reason why I pay for cable. Why? Because I do not want to stream games. Because nothing is more frustrating than the alert of the buzzer beater when I'm like, wait, no, no. And I guess stay. You're in my head right now. That happened to me last night. I was at. Uh, my girl's crib and she has the fire stick. So we're streaming the, the Patriots game. I have it. I have it. They always have it. <laughs> so we're watching the Patriots game and they get an alert on my phone that the game is over. And I was like, but I'm watching it. How is it? Right now. Oh, so I guess I'm done watching it. Because I know who yeah. wants to watch. You know who won. So yeah. that, like, I literally pay premium, like, not premium, but I pay for cable when I shouldn't have to because I don't even watch cable because. I cannot stream games. Cannot. But for the convenience. Like, I don't like turning on the fire stick, searching through, like, these pirated accounts and then downloading something. And when I could just literally come home, turn on the TV, hit the guide, see what's on, and watch it. And if yeah, I want... You, you still do that. But when I watch something on demand, just go to on demand. Yeah, I got to tap into the on demand. I got... Yo, I need to just watch some more stuff. I've been playing Call of Duty. So. Indeed. Priorities. Of course. I'm getting better. <laughs> I'm getting better. I'm getting better. <laughs> Copy that. Good episode, sir. Good ep- hey, yo, we have a similar shirts on today. Are you, are you like light powder blue? Yeah, light blue, light blue. Good light. stuff. Good stuff. Indeed, one of my favorite colors. One of my favorite colors. Good for the Chuckle Brothers. Absolutely. Hopefully, I'm fashionable enough. 
in the in this shirt. <laughs> gotta go, gotta go. <laughs> go gotta get out of here. I was gonna yeah, I was gonna I was gonna, I was gonna drop a flex bomb earlier, but I chilled. <laughs> but I chilled. Indeed, indeed. Nah, yeah, we're not gonna get into that. I value my life. All right, y'all. So for Josh, it's Trev. Thank you guys for watching and listening. Make sure you hit the YouTube hit link. Share your share the videos if you like them, guys. Leave comments. Engage with us. We'll respond. Um, yeah, good times. Peace out, y'all. Peace.